you're looking at what I consider to be the most adjustable driver that is on the market right now. It's the Mizuno STG 220. Mizuno in the last 12 months have produced a number of drivers that have performed, I suppose, out of character better than we would have expected. Mizuno are known for irons, but this driver, this adjustability, minus this little nugget that I've got in my hand, because these kind of weights can be moved into so many different positions. I just wonder if this is the answer to all your driving problems and perhaps mine. Now these little nuggets that I just referred to are 11 grams of weight. We've seen that plenty of times before in adjustable drivers. But what's different in terms of this driver is the amount of positions it can be located in. There's obviously the draw and the fade bias again which we always see in drivers and then at the back end we've got this high uh, position which again is that sort of cg as far back as it will go the interesting bit is with this is you can take both of those weights and effectively put them in dual positions the neutral position is one in the uh, fade one in the draw situation in exactly the same place that's neutral if you like but then by moving these around and like i said either one in one location one in another or effectively giving it its most uh, forgiving situation you could really put the two 11 gram weights into this high launch position so it's got lots of adjustability and from a custom fitters perspective that's got to be the perfect scenario because ideally whatever you require in terms of adjustments needed for your shot shape and I don't think I've ever seen the ability to make so many changes and that's before you even look at what adjustments are available in the hosel now one further note on adjustability before I go any further, if you're going to consider buying this driver then for me you've got to get custom fit, it's an absolute no brainer, you take it in, you get sorted, you get the expert to put all these little nuggets in the right position and you get home, you get your wrench, you put it in the bin and you stick with what you've got because this is the ultimate driver to get custom fit with. Right, so clearly we need some dry ball data and what I need to do is uh, have a little bit of a mess around with this thing, try it in all the different settings and see which is best suited to me. And I will collect some dry ball data once we've got that number and then we're going to take it out on the golf course and find out how it performs in real conditions. That's reality. Let's see how we get on with the first shot on camera. Pick up the sound of it before I say too much. It's sounding good, it's looking pretty decent as well. Let's get out to Wallasey, see what it does in reality, and then look at that dry ball data and see what impact these changes had on my performance. Right, we've just hit two balls off here to get things kicked off at Wallasey Golf Club. Uh, both totally different ball flights and uh, that's one of the things I'll discuss later on in the video in terms of what I found in dry ball data. Both the kind of shot shape you'd want to hit on this whole bit of left to right and in all honesty, ball's gone off fairly well there. One in the first cut of rough, one's in the middle of the fairway. We need to hit some more balls and like I said, I'll tell you my opinion on these drivers. Whether I think they're fit for the masses or whether I think there's a few issues that uh, are perhaps troubling me a little bit. Might take a bit of a breather in the uh, shade here at Wallace. It's absolutely gorgeous morning. Uh, we'll be complaining soon, it's too hot. First things I want to talk about about the Mizuno driver is how it looks. How it looks and shelf appeal in the sense of is it a brand you'd go for for your drivers and fairways. So first of all, how it looks. Our address, I think they've done a great... Um, change to their looks if you like to what they traditionally had it's a very unique look to them now uh, that sort of thick black front top line that you see into that sort of checkered flag bit that we've seen on a number of drivers high gloss finish looks really classy i like it in a dress i like the profile of it in terms of its height how it sits all those things are good from the underneath there are a lot of moving parts and again they're not the kind of things that I like to see underneath the driver, but at the end of the day, this is what this is all about. It's all about that custom fit and the adjustability, so it's got to be there. But the next thing, and it's quality finish, it just looks good. But the next thing I want to talk about is, and maybe a bit unfairly, and maybe it's a question that's now sort of shifted a little bit, is that Mizuno are well and truly known for their irons. No question about that whatsoever. But drivers, fairway woods, they've always had an issue trying to break really into that market. And I do think, like I said, 
is it an unfair question to ask now? Because I think in the last year, 18 months, the last couple of versions, particularly this driver, has really moved on considerably. And I think they're now developing a reputation to say they've got a real quality driver and fairway range at a more realistic price as well. So you're getting a lot of sort of bang for your buck in terms of what the quality of the product is. You're not paying that top end. Is the opinion changing? And are you moving towards the idea of Mizuno being someone you consider when you're going in to buy your next driver or fairway wood? You've seen two drives that, that are absolutely, they're, they're perfect for exactly what we're running on in terms of this uh, hard links terrain. It's a low ball flight that's gonna chase for miles. Won't leave me a great deal in. But one thing you'll notice with both of those is the ball flight. And it's something that I've really struggled with. And it's something I've struggled with no matter what sort of position we moved in terms of the weighting system. The one thing that I've noticed with this driver is the spin rate was incredibly low. And it meant that in terms of ball flight, it was generally on the low side. It was a very much a piercing flight, but it was also dropping out the skies. And that's the bit that really worried me in terms of the custom fit that I went through at 4Golf and we collected our dry ball data. And it's a big concern. Well, again, it's a really decent ball. We found it down the middle and the launch on that was fairly high, although we are on an elevated tee position, but you can see from that that the ball had gone very much into a higher ball flight. And that worry that I was talking about on the previous tee is just the variables that I found and the sort of, my inability to get some consistency out of the product in terms of getting a setup that was right for me. Now, it could well be, we were using um, this hazardous smoke RDX shaft stiff. It's a little bit on the stiff side for me, but I did switch it up into a much lighter 50 gram uh, riptide shaft in reg. And again, it was just for me, and it could have been the day in, in which I was delivering the club, although I've seen it again here this morning. We were getting some balls that were incredibly low spinning, incredibly low ball flight, dropping out the sky, only getting a low carry there for plenty of run. But for me, sort of optimal performance, it wouldn't be that what I'm looking for for my game. And I wouldn't think for the most average golfers out there, that's the kind of thing they're looking for. So it probably needed a lot more moving around and tweaking. And it certainly needed some changes in shaft to find something in the middle that made it work for me. But in terms of what I had, I only ever feed back what I find in terms of dry ball data and what I found here out on the course. And as you'll see from the numbers when we throw them up at the end, You'll notice what I'm talking about and you'll see why I was concerned that this would struggle to find its way into my bag. I just had a second ball there, even though we just finished, I just wanted to reload because that ball did go quite high that we talked about on camera, but then reload a little bit of a pull to the left. But again, it's what I'm going to do out on the golf course. And the ball flight was back to that low ball flight, chasing along, did okay left side of the fairway. But again, that's what I'm saying. One ball, it's poking up high and it's got a decent ball flight. Looked like what it wanted to be. Second ball I've just hit changes back to that low ball flight. And I don't want that kind of unpredictability on the tee. And for me, I'm just struggling a little bit with it. Right, so my sort of uh, summary of this driver would be, I suppose a little bit surprised. Like I said, I'll go through that dry ball data I briefly mentioned earlier. And uh, trust me, I hit an absolute rook of shots. I made lots of adjustments and I couldn't really quite find something that suited me. And as you see from those numbers, just a snapshot of them is that uh, we've got some very low spinning balls, like I said. We've got some balls with decent carry, but there were so many variables in there. I couldn't get anything that consistently performed well. We even put it in its sort of most forgiving position. Two weights at the very back into that higher launch CG right at the very back. And again, didn't have massive differences for me. So always accused of sometimes being overly positive about new products. And generally we are, but for me on this occasion, 
I'd be struggling because, like I said, unless we looked at changing a number of different shaft options, which is the one thing I would say that we would probably look to do if you're doing a custom fit and see if we could make those changes, then it certainly wasn't for me. And that coupled with the fact that even when we got a decent ball out of the club face, it just didn't feel as good. It felt, it just didn't feel as good. It was harder. And whatever they had in the previous iterations of this model and the last couple of drivers they've done, for me, it just lost that nice feel as well. So yeah, not for me on this occasion, but like I always say, this is one singular opinion. So get out there and uh, try them yourself. Anyway, that's me done. Thank you for watching on this gorgeous day. Thank you to Wallasey Golf Club for having us. Subscribe if you don't already and uh, hit that like button and I'm ready for a drink. I'm absolutely roasting. See you all soon.